Welcome to this podcast, a companion to our series that we're doing on Return of the King. Uh, I'm Lance Wigden. I'm the Communications Director here at Real Life Ministries, and it is my good pleasure, as usual, to be with uh, our lead pastor, Jim Putman. Jim, we're, uh, the hope for this podcast is to help life groups navigate uh, what is a, a fairly tricky topic, which brings me to my first question, which is, uh, right on the heels of Easter, we're diving into end times. Uh, why did we choose this series? Well, I think everybody's noticing uh, a lot of unusual things for America, mm-hmm. anyway. You've got uh, pandemics, you've got politics changing, um, you've got uh, economic issues, uh, you've got a media that that has become very antagonistic overtly, Mm -hmm. uh, along with universities, uh, a lot of riots, all this stuff. And I think people are asking, what in the world's going on? Um, uh, We just did a Christian Evidences night, and, you know, 2,000 people show up. There's a lot of questions right now for Americans. They're shaken up. Mm -hmm. And so um, this is a topic I think people are talking a lot about right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Questions about the future, and they feel like this this is the end of the world. Well, or America or Mm -hmm. something. It's certainly, uh, you know, the signs of the times are that that things are changing. People can feel it. And so they're wondering, what's this about? What could this be about? Uh, And what does the Bible actually say? I think they're more interested right now because, uh, you know, we we like to say the Lord likes to shake us off our feet so we hit our knees. Mm -hmm. The world's shaking in some ways right now. And people are going, okay, what does this mean? And, I, and I'm glad for that. I think they should be looking around going, what's up? That's, yeah, it's always a, a good spot to be in versus uh, ready to be ambushed. But as these questions have come in, we've decided to do this series. Uh, but there is some uh, fear that you have about how, how it, is this going to roll out into the life groups and in that environment, how is that going to be handled? What, what are some of the... Um, what are some of the topics or, or what are some of the things that you're concerned about on this topic? Well, first, a um, couple of things. We always talk about the three buckets here. Mm-hmm. Um, bucket one is essential for salvation. Bucket two is essential for unity. Bucket three is preferential. You know, um, let's not argue about it. Unity is super important and uh, this subject has, over the years, been a source of conflict, potentially. And so, you know, one of the sayings that we believe in is, in essentials, unity, and non-essentials, mm-hmm. freedom, in all things love. So there are some people that have really studied this issue, mm-hmm. and many others haven't. And um, some of the people who have really studied this issue have come to almost like a dogmatic version of what they think it's going to look like. Mm-hmm. And anybody else is stupid mm-hmm. or her- it's heresy or whatever. And and I would just like to say this subject has, um, or, or the views on this subject have changed throughout history. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that most people are pop- or, uh, know about, it's very popular currently, it would be um, the dispensational premillennial, big terms, mm-hmm. uh, pre-tribulational view uh, really started to come about in the 1800s. So mm-hmm. it's fairly recent. I'm not saying that makes it wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying there are um, a lot of different views, and we're going to be making some resources available uh, that um, talk about some of the different views. And 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 oftentimes people like to build a straw man and beat it to death. In mm-hmm. other words, they 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 say it this way. And whoever has a differing view is stupid, and this is why. I always like to to get resources where it talks about people who are in the know, mm-hmm. or it reveals people who are in the know discussing with each other. And what you find out is there are holes mm-hmm. in each of their games, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I lean probably towards a premillennial, um, pre-tribulational, dispensational a little bit, but my views have changed over the years because, um, you know, there are good arguments for all of them, mm-hmm. and there are holes in all of them. And I, I, uh, so I, I, I get concerned that this will be a source of argument uh, and, and take away from the vision and mission and, 
of our church to reach lost people. Uh, I like to say we're on the entrance committee. We're not on the exit committee. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's not to say there isn't truth in all of this or that we shouldn't be ready. I just want to make sure that we're going to be unified on the essential things so we get something done. We don't want to be fighting in the locker room so we can't play uh, you know, on the field. Totally. Uh, where people are speculating on these different views, uh, they're filling in the blanks. And then, uh, so what you're, you're concerned on is sometimes people will actually get stubborn and that's their view and they lock in and they're even willing to fight over something that we really don't know because it's the future. Yeah. But, th- but there is plenty in the Bible that we do know and what, what, what can we yeah. hang on on this yeah. topic? If you take all the different views, there are certain things that everybody agrees on. Mm-hmm. Um, we all agree that there's going to be a, a second return of Christ, right? Now, the question is, is, it, is the first return a secret rapture, mm-hmm. and then later on a physical return? Um, that depends on your view. But everybody agrees there's going to be a second return. Everybody agrees that uh, there's go- you're going to be transformed, your body will go from a, a physical, natural body to something beyond that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to be given an eternal body, uh, and, and for Christians and non-Christians alike, because you're going to face judgment. Everybody agrees you're going to face judgment. Now, uh, Christians, there's a debate whether Christians uh, deal with the Bema Seat judgment, uh, which is a separate judgment not based on heaven and hell, because that's already been decided. Mm-hmm. And therefore, it's based uh, on rewards when you when you go to heaven. There's the bema seat judgment that some believe you're going to have, or it's all going to happen at the great white throne judgment. But every every view agrees there's a judgment where you stand before the Lord with your eternal body. Mm-hmm. And at the judgment, you are going to be sent to one of two places based on what you did with Jesus. You're going to be uh, he sent to eternal separation and damnation. Uh, Daniel chapter 12 talks about that, um, or you're going to be sent to, to eternal life, the new heaven and the new earth. Mm-hmm. Everybody agrees with that. Uh, everybody agrees in the new heaven and the new earth, but some would, would say there's going to be a, a physical millennial reign of Christ, uh, and some would say that it's a spiritual reign of Christ, and there's debate about all of the millennial perspective. Mm-hmm. But... Everybody agrees on physical return of Mm -hmm. Christ, uh, changed uh, body, uh, you know, uh, eternal Eternal. judgment, heaven, or hell. Now, again, currently, there are people that say there's no hell, there's just annihilation. Mm -hmm. And that's unscriptural. That that counters what Jesus says, and Mm -hmm. it counters what the book of Daniel says. Both old and new agree on uh, eternal separation, eternal shame, eternal life, in a very negative place, absent from the presence of God. There's newer versions that don't like that view, but we're not really interested in the newer versions. We're interested in historic Christianity as it was defined by Jesus, by the Old Testament prophets, and the New Testament apostles. Well, the uh, no uh, no act of hell, uh, that is more than speculation. That's... That, that, that's uh, um that's even a line further than what we're talking about. I can't agree with you on, uh, you know, end times. That is that is uh, changing what the Bible says. Yeah. So you're not, you know, in our one-on-one class, we talk about a real heaven and hell. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now some of the pe- people in our mem- in our uh, life groups may not have taken our membership class. Uh, you have to assign a document and agree that these are the values of our church. These are the things we believe. So uh, again, though. The enemy and the world is always trying to reshape Christianity to make it acceptable to the world, right? Everybody Mm -hmm. goes to heaven. There is no absolute right and wrong. Uh, There's no gender. There's no... They they, kind of want an all-encompassing God is love sort of version of the faith. Mm -hmm. And God is love, but God also gives you the ability to choose choose freely. He wants to save, but ultimately... Um, we get to make a choice, and then he honors that choice. There is a real heaven and a real hell. Mm-hmm. So that's that's not a uh, that's an essential doctrine of the faith. And um, uh, you know, so uh, bucket one essential for salvation. Bucket two essential for unity. Bucket three pref- it, it, it's not hell is not a three. I would 
it, it's it, it, we can't be unified with somebody that says right. that. You know, annihilationism versus uh, um, a real active, present, ongoing hell. Uh, you know, we, we just can't be unified about that. And if you're dismissing hell altogether, uh, you, you, you're not going to be a member of our church. Mm-hmm. Because it's a first bucket issue. Right. And it's one of these five things that we feel like we can stand on, yeah. on the topic of uh, the end times. A lot of people now get information and and, and this speculation with the internet. There is just a tremendous amount of um, different people that would call themselves scholars that give uh, a lot of fake news. A lot of fake news on the topic of end times. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would you tell a home group leader or a life group leader? Excuse me, uh, that had somebody say, "I heard this," or uh, like I, I said one yesterday about uh, the dragon. Uh, potentially, well, that would be ch- China. I think the dragon is China because, uh, you know. The- well, we're going to try to, um, as we go through this series, deal with some things that people are wondering about, you mm-hmm. know, like uh, the mark of the beast. Is that the vaccine and the passport? You know, we're, we'll talk about some of that stuff as the series goes on. So stick with us on that. But there's a lot of speculation, there's a lot of diving in to this subject. And I think, um, like I said, I, I'm on the, the entrance committee, not on the exit committee. Mm-hmm. And I know some people that are so involved in this subject uh, and trying to figure out all the, 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 the mystery and the vagueness and filling in all the gaps that they're, they're, they're um, I just think they get into dangerous waters. Mm-hmm. You know, I think one of the things that we have to accept is both in the Old and New Testament, there's mystery involved. Mm-hmm. There's some things we're not going to figure out till after the fact. Uh, that's the, there were so many prophecies about Jesus, but they missed it in in the, the uh, Old Testament and his first coming. And uh, the reason for that is that different prophets were given different scenes, and you know they were only given part of the picture, mm-hmm. which is why the Bible talks about it's a mystery. Paul said in First Corinthians that we know in part and we see in part. But someday we'll fully know as we're fully known. Um, And so there's a mystery, and I think there's a mystery for this reason. Uh, God has allowed free will and free choice, and he has an active enemy. Mm -hmm. And that enemy is the devil. And if God lays it out exactly so that the devil knows what's going to happen ahead of time and he can figure it out, he gets in the way. Uh, One of the things I, I, I am saying this weekend, which is really important is, in my view, uh, I I think about Judas. It says that the devil entered into Judas uh, at the Passover feast, Mm -hmm. you know, and and, um, and then Judas then went and betrayed Jesus. Now, if if the devil knew what Jesus was really doing... Mm -hmm. No way. No way does he enter in to help Jesus out, to betray Jesus Mm -hmm. uh, with Judas. No way. Why didn't he know? Because it was vague enough that, um, you know, uh, the New Testament says that even the angels longed to look and didn't quite understand and they want to know, you know. That there's, God is giving us enough to know, oh, oh my goodness, big picture, oh my goodness. But he keeps it veiled enough so that the enemy can't step in and get in the way to the extent mm-hmm. that he thwarts God. And so there is a mystery to all of this and we have to accept it. But again, there's some things... That there's no mystery about. We are told to be ready mm-hmm. and to be active doing the Lord's work, mm-hmm. to be awake. There's no ambiguity about that. And, we, and, and we're told the signs are coming, and it's supposed to wake us up, and we're supposed to be looking and be alert, and this, the signs of the times, Jesus said. Yeah, you know, he told the Pharisees, you know the signs of the times when it comes to the, you know, planting seed mm-hmm. and harvesting, and, and but you're not aware of the signs of time. You're totally missing it. No, that's why I'm saying right now, people need to be awake and alert. Something's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't know whether it's the end of, uh, you know, unless a great revival happens, it's the end of America as a country. It just goes the way of others because many countries have come and gone. And people thought, well, is this it? Ter- terrible things have happened. Uh, whether it's that or we're getting close, which I mm-hmm. think it's that one. Mm-hmm. I think we are getting close and people need to pay attention. There's things happening that have not happened before that fit with Scripture. Pay attention, be alert, 
be about your father's business. That's what the Bible tells us to do. Well, I'm excited about this series, I, and I can understand now why uh, there is so much disagreement about it and, and uh, why uh, people kind of can get uh, dug in on a particular view or uh, maybe they would fall prey to more m- misinformation. But I, I think it's uh, I think it's important uh, series, just like you said, it's, it's definitely the time to do it. Uh, what, what is your hope that our, our life groups will walk away with uh, after the series is over? Well, I think for all Christians, first of all, to, to wake up and start paying attention to what really matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, your identity is in Christ. It's not in what job you do, what house you live in. Um, it's not in whether your kid wins at this sport because you have to live vicariously through them or you know, it's not what degree they get. It's time to wake up and understand what really matters. There's something going on in the spiritual realm that matters. And uh, I think the other thing is, is they need to be about the Father's business. If the time is short, everybody knows somebody that if Jesus were to return Mm -hmm. or they were to die, they'd be lost for eternity. I don't, you know, one of the things that always interests me is when we talk about hell, everybody, you know, a lot of the Christians I know, hell's real. Mm Mm-hmm. But their loved ones who aren't walking with Jesus aren't going there, mm-hmm. you know, because they're a baby Christian. You know, they they prayed the prayer when they were eight. Mm-hmm. Jesus doesn't say that's true. Jesus says, you know, a tree by its fruit. Mm-hmm. You know, if they're not actively participating in a walk with Jesus, abiding, and and there's not they're not bearing spiritual fruit as Jesus defines it. They're not obeying Christ and growing in obedience. Then you need to be concerned enough that you actually do something. Now, be prayerful about it. Be wise, but. Um, I just think even if Jesus isn't returning, that's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is going to return, but I mean, right this minute, right? That's true. Pay attention. This world goes by fast. Time goes by fast. Be about the Lord's business. Keep your eyes up. And, uh, and there's enough going on right now where persecution is coming, whether, whether, uh, Jesus was returning or America's going down, downward. Mm -hmm. Are our people ready for that? The uh, Bible calls it the great apostasy, people turning away from the faith. Jesus talked about it. I'm watching that happen, you mm-hmm. know, because they're not rooted in the truth and they're not paying attention and the culture is dictating terms and definitions. I just want our people to be awake. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think that's absolutely right, especially when you look at uh, how far things have moved just in the history of this church, which isn't that long. It is just uh, uh, disheartening, but... Uh, we have uh, hope in the Lord, and I think it's a good... Well, if it's, we're right, if time is short, you know, if I think that's true, that's actually kind of exciting, if I'm ready. Right. If I'm awake. It's like, all right, we win, you know, but Lord, I'm, I'm so ready to be done with this world. I'm so ready to be done with the battle and the struggle. Now, it doesn't mean I, I, I want to die. I, I, I'm not going to die. I'm going to live forever. I would just like to get on with it. Let's go. Let's get, let's get, let's get this done mm-hmm. so we can be about uh, being with the Lord and with each other as it was intended forever. Let's do that. Absolutely. And I'd be okay with a new body. Yeah. I would be okay if you had a new body too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. And uh, join us again next week as we uh, talk about uh, week two of the series.